I have with me um, L.A. Hardy. He is a black comedian, also known as Black Dad. He performs. He performed for the U.S. military as well as BET, MTV, and VH1. He's often heard on Sirius SM radio, and I wanted to talk to L.A. about you know what's happening in the country today, the race thing, the father thing. Uh, President Trump, and I'm Skyping with him. We will get to your calls. L.A., welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me, man. How you doing? All is well. It's uh, Jesse. James is the uh, producer. Ah, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, How you doing, Jesse? No, no problem, buddy. No problem at all. Uh, Lahar, uh, I mean, L.A., are you a uh, considered to be a conservative or liberal? I just consider myself to be a free man in America, man. I don't, I don't like those labels. And to be honest, <clears throat> I think that's where the division comes from right there. As soon as somebody starts talking to me, the first thing they want to say is, are you a liberal or conservative? What difference does that make? I'm voting for people that look at things the way I want to see them and accomplish yeah. something. Yeah, and the reason I, I, I ask, or I think most people might ask, because— there's a uh, liberals. Um, liberals don't see things in the right way, whereas conservative, true conservatives, tend to see good and evil. Where liberals tend to see race. I don't know if I'd agree with that. You, uh, I think it definitely comes down to where you are in the country geographically, and the people that you find yourself being around. Um, I have an opportunity to live and have lived all over the world, not all over the world, traveled all over the world, lived in a few different places. Uh, geographically speaking, in the South, I would say you're, you're, what you're saying probably rings more true than, say, uh, other parts of the country. I'm currently, uh, I have a restaurant here. I'm in South Florida. Um, the number of people who would probably call themselves conservative is a probably a lot greater where I am. Right. So the outlook, the opinions, the uh, the way that they do and go about their business is going to be a lot different than where I grew up, which was Cleveland, Ohio. Do you agree that liberals tend to be into gender identity, uh, you know, racism, sexism? Uh, homophobism, Islamophobism, they tend to uh, politically be into the uh, gender politics. Do you agree to that? No. Uh, I would ask, where is your proof in that statement? That's all they ever talk about. That's all they ever promote. When you say they, the who liberals. are we talking about specifically? The liberals, Democrats, the liberal name, media. Name me, some, name me some names. Give me some people that are predominantly along the lines of what we're talking about. Are we talking about a Bill Maher? Are we talking about uh, the former president? Are we talking about just people in general? Because in, in what I do, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in contact with everybody. I We're see talking about Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, the entire Democratic Party, and the liberal media. That's all they ever promote is I, identi I identity politics. I, I don't agree with that, but I think that they're the ones what who— What else do they are, promote? Well, they promote freedom. Freedom? I mean, I'm into freedom. I'm into personal freedom. If you want to do what you want to do, have fun, have at it. If that's what you want to do and it doesn't harm me or anybody that I'm, I'm, I'm promoting, do, do your thing. Um, I think we got to get out of this whole liberal conservative thing and start being Americans. So um, if they're into president. if they're into freedom, why do they attack the folks who disagree with them? Those people have a right and a freedom to disagree with them? Absolutely. So then why some do those, Obama— Some of those same people you're talking about are not promoting medical marijuana. So if a liberal promotes medical marijuana, is that a race? Is that a, a culture? Is that what, what you're talking about? Because medical marijuana is a whole different, a whole different animal, and it's looked upon differently by what—I'll just use your terms— Liberals and conservatives. If uh, they, if Obama and people like Hillary Clinton and others are into freedom, why do they attack those who disagree with them, conservatives who disagree with them? Shouldn't they allow them to have the freedom to express 
their disagreement without having to be attacked? Of course. And don't we as American citizens have that same right without being attacked by the president on Twitter? By the president? Also a conservative. Did you the president vote? Attacked, uh, attacks people every day on Twitter. Uh, every day. Uh, is he attacking or oh, yeah. responding okay. back? It's both. It's, it's both. both. Does he have the freedom to do that? Of course he does. So he's not wrong for doing that, right? Well, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not talking about right and wrong. Because see, now you're trying to trap me into the into the conservative statement of right and wrong. And it, we were just talking about freedom. But Twitter doesn't limit your freedom. But people like Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and others, they do try to limit your freedom. So there's a difference between Twitter oh, yeah. and— How do they try to limit your freedom? Please explain that to me. Who is that, Barack Obama and others? You said Barack and you said Hillary, who doesn't even own own, own an office at all, at all. She's a private citizen. So I'm trying to figure out where, in fact, you're going uh, when you say what you just said. I'm trying to understand. When Barack Obama was in the White House, he okay. he he, tried, he passed laws that would hurt those who would disagree with him. By every president does that. I'm sorry. Every president does that. I mean, uh, you're gonna put you're gonna put in office people that agree with you. You're gonna put in the cabinet people that agree with you. Before Barack got in, you had Bush doing the same thing. Do twice. you do you agree with me that Barack Obama? What's the worst, and we'll go down in history as the worst, most hated, godless president that we've ever experienced? Wow, that was a tough statement. Of course I don't agree with that. Why not? Well, I look at what the man has accomplished. What did, he, mean, what did he accomplish? I'm into, I'm into accomplishment and doing what you say you're going to do. What did he if accomplish? You're me, if you're telling me that you're going to do something, go do it. I believe that was him that got Osama bin Laden. Uh, I believe that was him that got us out of Iraq and Afghanistan. And having been to both of those countries myself personally, I can tell you those were good decisions. Well, first of all, Obama did not get bin Laden. But I'll let you have that. It was the Marines that did that. Well, uh, come on. Secondly, <laughs> um, Afghanistan, it wasn't a good idea to withdraw the soldiers like that or Iraq. To bring Have you been to either one of those countries? To bring everybody home like that. And, and, and now they have allowed ISIS and those radical terrorist groups to take over. Thank God the president is this great white hope is dealing with that. Did you vote for Obama? Yes, I did. Twice. And are you a Christian? Absolutely. And at, being a— you? Be, yes. Be, okay. Being a Christian, how were you able to vote for a man— do you support same-sex marriage? Don't care. You don't care about same-sex marriage? It has nothing to do with me. So do you, so you're let okay? Me, let me ask you. So does don't care mean that you're okay with it? I'm okay with it. Do you support abortion? Yes. You support abortion. Yes, do, sir. Let me go back to the homosexual marriage. Is it right or is it wrong? As a Christian, is homosexual marriage marriage right or wrong? Uh, I would say you'd have to ask God and Jesus Christ, because I'm not here to judge people. Um, that's my opinion. Um, my opinion is not law. My opinion also does not change one iota of what these people want to do. If that's what they want to do, and the laws say that it's okay for them to do it, why should I stand in the way of that if that's what the law says? As a Christian, do you have the right to discern right from wrong? Of course. I'm going to always make my own choices. And so as a Christian, do you discern that homosexuality is right or wrong? I don't discern it one way or the other, because if you look at what the Bible has taught us, a number of things in the Bible have changed over time. There are things that were, that were okay back then that are not okay now. Back then, you could have multiple wives. You can't do that now. So, Back then, homosexuality was not viewed as homosexuality, not to mention the fact <laughs> I'm going to throw this back out again. Have you been to Afghanistan or the Middle East or Iraq? You yourself? No, I have not gone. But okay. I have friends. Let me tell who, you about a little thing. I have that, friends okay. and family members. Let me tell you about who, a little thing that they do. I have uh, friends and family members who have gone there because, I've been there myself. because they're in the military. I've been there myself. We did 28 shows in 27 days in Iraq 
in 2003 before we caught Saddam Hussein. In 2004, I went to Afghanistan and spent my Thanksgiving two weeks with the soldiers. So I have a pretty clear understanding of, of some world of, of world affairs in that area and the things that are, everybody's just different, man. For example, let me, let me throw this out at you because I, I would venture to bet a lot of your listeners don't know anything about this. In the Muslim world, there is a shortage of women in, in, in the way that they look at things. In that, in, that, in that shortage, they are allowed to have homosexual, what we would deem homosexual relationships with other men. They're allowed to. You will see men walking, holding hands down the street. Well, really, they're allowed to have it with boys, not necessarily. Uh, no, men too. And, and are you okay with them doing it with boys? Of course not. I saw Hold it on. Let me, let me take a quick break. Let me take a quick break. L.A. Hardy is with me back in a moment. L.A., you said that Republicans believe in virtue and you believe in freedom. Am I right about that? Yes, sir. Can you have freedom without virtue? I don't know. I can only make a personal decision for myself. I mean, that's that's who I'm really talking about. Um, I'm a dad. You, you called me black dad. That's my that's my uh, my handle, so to speak because that's uh, a cartoon I created, and it's also a, um, uh, uh, a belief system that I'm, that I'm dealing with. I'm 56 years old, so I've been around the block a few times. I've seen a few things, and um, I heard one of your callers speaking before where they were saying uh, they don't see color. Well, that's because they're blind. You see color. Stop it. Stop acting like you don't see what's going on. The problem is not that you see color. The problem is how you react to it. Your reaction to something is the difference between something going positive or possibly something going negative. But sitting around saying, I don't see color trying this, we are the world stuff, you're kidding yourself. So let me go back to the question. As a Christian, mm -hmm. you don't know if um, you don't know if you can have freedom, human beings, period. You don't know if you can have freedom without virtue. You're not, you don't know if that's true or not for human beings. I didn't say that. You I'm did. asking you. I okay, asked, you could mean? you have freedom without virtue? And you said, well, for you, but you, you don't seem to know if it's for all human beings or not. For all human be beings, could you have freedom without virtue? What's virtue to you? Answer that definition. question first, and then I'll tell you. I'll, I'll respond to that. As a Christian... Uh -huh. You don't know if human beings can have freedom without virtue. Give me your definition of virtue in that question. You don't know what virtue means? I'm asking your definition. Because but, you, asked me, you asked me questions previously about good and evil. You asked me questions about good and bad. That's always going to be a judgment call. No, but as a Christian, you should know. You're my guest, and you're the expert right now. And, I'm, uh -huh. and you're a Christian, so yes, I'm sir. asking... Can you have freedom? Can human beings have freedom without virtue? Yes, sir. They can't. And how is that? Well, I mean, it depends on what you determine for yourself. That's what the beauty of America is all about. You making determinations for yourself. As a Christian, you're still making those same determinations for yourself. And then you're asking God to forgive if you fall out of those things. That's amazing. And that's what... When, so you believe in God, but doesn't God say that all who sin are slaves? And if you're a slave, you have no freedom and you have no virtue. I'm not sure you're quoting which part of the Bible you're quoting with that, with that one. You never uh -huh. heard that all who sin are enslaved? Yeah, I've also heard of the Ten Commandments, and I've also, I'm also raised a Catholic, so I believe that our sins are forgiven. So do you believe that if you sin, you're enslaved? No. You don't? No. You, you can go to the Lord at any time and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> really? Judas, Judas did such. So, Judas gave up the son of man and asked God for forgiveness. When John, so God when, said to him, hey man, sorry, you're a slave. Too bad for you. So when John said in 834, Jesus said, in John 834, Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. Do you believe that? Not necessarily. 
Oh, you don't believe that. That's one man's opinion in the Bible. That does not make it 100% true. And if you believe that to be true, then you're going to believe some other things are not going to be true that are said in the Bible. I see. Like what I just quoted. So you're saying that that's Jesus' opinion, one man's opinion. So it's Jesus' opinion, so it's just his opinion. Did you did you quote Jesus in that? Yeah, John said oh. Jesus said it. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I took it as I took it as one man saying it. Right. But again, my my point is is still the same. But now that you know that Jesus yeah. said it, does it change the way you think you see it? Not really. No. no. <laughs> what kind of Christian are you, man? Wow, that sounds like a little judgmental statement there, brother. You don't I mean, seem that's not, for, that's not for you to judge. But you don't seem that's the whole to point of this. The whole point is we are not to judge each other. But you're judging that's me God. right now. That's for God to do. But you're judging me right now. I'm not judging you. you I'm say, taking your questions and I'm asking you to to clarify some of your questions so that I can answer them in a in an intelligent manner. Let me ask, um, do you believe that there is sin? Yes. And do you believe that there is good and evil? Yes. Okay. And so you said that you were okay with so-called same-sex marriage, but not ab- abortion. And am I right about that? No, I said I was I was okay with abortion too. Oh, you support abortion as well? Yes, sir. And, and, and as a Christian, you support abortion. When you say the word support, what I'm saying in my words of support is that's a woman's choice. That's her choice. I don't have. I can't make that choice. I don't have that kind of body. If that's what she wants to do or chooses to do, and the law gives her that right to do it, who am I to step in and say, no, you shouldn't? Did God, your God, did he give her the right to kill a child inside the womb? Now we're going somewhere completely different than the conversation started out, because now you're going to someplace and you're calling something something that's different than what I might call it. You're saying for sure that they're killing a baby, right? Right. Okay. I'm not sure that I'm in agreement with that. What is it about you? Do you So if science said that it is a baby, would you believe it then? Wow. Now we're going to go to science. Okay. Well, if we're going to go to science, then let's go to global warming. Science has said plenty about global warming, and conservatives don't seem to want to listen to that. So why do they want to listen to it when it's conducive for their needs to listen to something from science? Please explain that to me, because I don't get it. Well, there are scientists. You can't pick and choose where you choose to get your information and then use it for your own purposes and say God said it. What you can't size? Take one statement and then turn that statement into something for your use and then take another statement and switch it around and say, nah, I don't really believe that, though. But aren't you doing that with abortion? Not at all. How am I doing that with abortion, my friend? What is it about you that made you think that you're a Christian? You don't seem to believe in any of the things that God is about, any of the principles so far. You don't agree with any of the principles that he is about. Why do you think that you are a Christian? I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior. What is it about? Why do you know that you believe in him? You don't believe in any of his principles. I believe in plenty of them, but you haven't touched on all of his principles. Give me You've one that on you two or three. Give me one that you believe in. Here's the biggest one that you, everyone should believe in: Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And what does that mean to you? It means treat people the way you want to be treated. If you want to be treated with respect, you have to give respect. So you are going along so, with evil. You are going along with evil, so you can be res- get respect. I didn't say that. You did. I'm asking. Here's a, here's a prime example. I came on this Skype interview today. I'll be honest. I really didn't didn't even know who you were or what I was coming on to talk about. Uh, I'm kind of ambushed right now. What do you mean, ambushed? Time, ambushed by the fact that I didn't even realize this was a conversation we were going to be having. Um, by, the, by the same token, I'm listening to exactly what you're saying, and we're having an intelligent conversation without either one of us yelling at each other which doesn't seem to happen on the streets of America today. Yeah. For whatever reason, you and I are respecting each other. Let me take a quick break. When I come back, I want to ask you about the great white hope 
And then we'll take some phone calls. We're going to talk about boxing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Back in a moment. L.A., I talked to the producer during the break, and he told me you didn't know what you were talking You knew the subjects of what we were going to deal with on the show today. Hey, man, no worries. Okay. That's, that's, that's the beauty of what I do. I, I got can fall into anything, and we can talk about it. I have a text uh, from the Bible go-to guy, and he want to know... Um, the Bible go-to guy? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I need one of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, he want ask him is murder right or wrong? Murder. It's wrong. It's wrong. That's a commandment. That's a commandment. Okay, thou shalt not commit murder. Thou shalt not kill. Did you grow? Did you vote for the uh, Great White Hope? No, I did not vote for that guy in the movie. <laughs> did you vote for uh, President Trump? No, I did not. Why not? Uh, he wasn't talking about any. He wasn't talking to me. And um, how is he doing now that he's in? What's your impression of him? Uh, tough to say. I'll be honest. I'm probably one of the few people you'll ever meet that has not watched the news, network news, since the election. So all my news I get either from the Internet, uh, general people on the streets, and here and there, a few clips I might see on TV. So Look, you, let, me just say, let me just say this about President Trump. I didn't like President Bush. I didn't like the president before him. Didn't like President Reagan, and he basically is the same thing as what we're going through right now. But I'll say this. As an American, I want him to do a good job. That's it. I want him to do a good job. Whether or not he does... <laughs> but I want him to do a good job. So you didn't because like Bill. Do you, a good job. We're all going to be in trouble. You didn't like Bill Clinton. Bill was okay. Until you said he started putting all the brothers in jail. You said you didn't like out. the one before uh, George Bush. That was Clinton. You didn't like him. He was okay. I mean, you know, uh, at at that point, I was probably in my let's see, what twenties. So I wasn't half as astute into, uh, into politics as I am now with even uh, concerning myself with the ideas of what was going on in the world. Because when you're in your 20s, you're not supposed to be. And so since you don't watch the news at all, you don't have an opinion at all about how the president is doing now because you have no idea. No. Okay. I, hope he's doing, I hope he's doing a good job. Uh, I hear things and, you know, I make up my judgments about it, but... I'm not sitting around having conversations about Trump doing this or Trump doing that. I mean, again, people keep saying and acting like this is something new. This is nothing new. Ronald Reagan pulled the same mess back in 1980s. But if you're not and, watching the news and you're not knowing what's going on, you don't know what mess he's no, pulling or not that. pulling. I said I didn't know what was going on. I said I don't watch network news. But if you don't you're need not to watch network news to know what's going on, if you only, I got this thing that we do. It's called reading. I pick up a newspaper, and I read probably about four of them a day. So you do know what the president's doing there? Well, I just don't watch it on the news. Amazing. Let me ask, because of time, and I want to get some, some calls for you. Okay. I agree with President Trump, the great white hope, that people like Colin Kaepernick and all of those black thugs on the football fields— Oh, who are not, who are black not thugs. —who are not respecting the flag— turning their back on the country, okay. on our military men and women, really? um, um, after making buku money, and then okay. they turn their back on the country. I think all of those SOBs should be fired. Do you agree with, with me, and the president and me? No, and I, I don't. And I think that's pretty wrong of you to be calling their moms bitches. And, I mean, that's... That's pretty, pretty much what you just said, but you didn't use the word. You said SOBs. So I, that's, I, I, that's, that's, that's not fair. That's no, not fair. And you know it's not fair. Why is that's, it? That's the bad part about it. Why is it that you don't disagree with them for turning their backs on the flag and on the country, on the men and women who have sacrificed their lives so that they can play football? Well, let's, let's, let's take apart what you just said. 
You said turn their backs. Number one, none of them are turning their backs. Number two, I don't know if you've been to any sporting events lately and heard the national anthem. Half the time, people in the stands aren't even paying attention, and a lot of them don't even take off their hats anymore, and I don't like that personally. That's my personal pet peeve. National anthem's playing, shut your mouth, take your hat off. That's my view. But this is America, and if you choose to do something different, that's on you. That's not up to me to sit here and go into the stands and start punching people in the face because they don't want to observe it the same way that I do. Is it right? Is it right for the thugs make, to be doing what they're doing? Let me, this last, let me make this last point. Secondarily, you're calling them thugs. That's a judgment call. And you're, 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 you're painting everybody in the NFL with the same brush. All of those that's, who are kneeling. That's, that's, that's unfortunate. No, all of those who are kneeling. What, do you know the reason why they're kneeling? Yes. What's the reason they're kneeling in your mind? Bec- they are thugs. They hate white people. They blame others for the what's wrong in the black community rather than taking responsibility uh, themselves. No, that's, and that's then, not why uh, uh, that's four, 400 to 700 of them have criminal records. So they're thugs. Well, number one, you don't have any proof of that. Number two, they're not doing it for that. They're doing on one knee to protest the treatment of white police officers or police officers in general with black people. But that's an that's illusion. That's not real. That's not true. No, that's that's true, bro. No, I, I can. I can. The, the knot on the side of my head right here from a Billy Club from a cop, I can tell you is actually uh, a, a partially a true statement. Let me take a good break. When I, when I come back, we'll take some calls. So, L.A., I want you to respond to something that I have here for you. And uh, I'm, what trying you got, to, Jesse? I'm trying to pull it up, man. And it won't man, come. Man, me and you ought to do a show together. Why? Because I like what you're doing. I like the way you stir the pot. <laughs> and I think your listeners would really love some of my points of view. Do you believe that? Oh, maybe that'll happen one day. Let's do it, man. <laughs> Let's do um, it. According to, um, let me see, I, James, come and help me with my computer thing. It won't, oh, here it goes. I want you to, so you believe that there is such a thing as police brutality, right? Yes, sir. Well, it's an illusion. It doesn't exist. It's another made-up lie <laughs> by, the, by the children Did of the you lie. Just say, hold on a second. Did you just say it's an illusion and it doesn't exist? Right. So when I got my behind whooped by the cops, I was imagining it. When I spent the night in jail for not doing anything, I was imagining it. So you're just walking down the road, the cop beat no, you no, no, for no, no, no reason. No, no, there was a There was a situation. Uh-huh. And in that situation, it did not require me getting hit in the head with a billy club. What did but you I, do wrong in that situation? We were having a conversation, and uh, this particular officer felt like he didn't want to hear anything I had to say. And you were going off, right? No. You, there was he, no need for me to go off. He was, I, was he trying to get you to be quiet? Yes. And why didn't you follow his instructions? I did. We had a, we had a whole thing that went on. This was, it, 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 there's, this situation has, is, uh, will take more time to explain. Right. So let me, I want to move. But my point, my point at the end of it was, it does exist, Jesse. Um, in 2016, there was, there was a 53% increase in gun murders of police disproportionately by black males. Black males are 6% of the population, but 42% of cop killers. That's according to, is, is that from Heather James? This is from Heather McDonald. In 20, Who's Heather McDonald? She is a, a writer. In 2015, police were 18. Point, five times as likely to be killed by blacks as unar- unarmed black mayors were to be killed by police. In San Francisco, so, so, so let me understand. In San Francisco, blacks were eight times as likely to resist arrest as white people. That's according to San Francisco Gates. Gate. That's, that's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear who was saying this because, uh, it also, I guess it just really comes down to who your sources are as to whether your information is valid or not. I mean, we can go That's to not necessarily true. about how racial profiling was pulled out and thrown in the face of the governor because the New Jersey cops were racially profiling black people. And that was found out to be true by the government. That's, all, the fake, government. that's all fake news. But let me ask, let me ask, what Some is... Who just made it up. 
by the government. This LA. is the same government that you're saying is run by the Great White Hope. LA. So this government is telling you this. Why don't you believe it? And why do you call it fake news? LA, let me ask, because of time, I want to get some call. We're running out of time. Let me yeah, ask, let me ask, are you a man? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Are you a man? That's what I thought you said. Of I course. know you are a male, but are you a man? Oh, uh, bro, I'm a man. I'm raising two kids, and I've raised some other people's kids. And what is a man? A man is a man that takes care of his household, his woman, his wife, his family. That's what and a man sure is. Everyone is safe. Um, and so you are a father. You're married. Absolutely. Twenty years, same woman. Good for you. But you don't quite Ask know. Ask me how many baby mamas I got. How many baby mamas do you have? The one I'm married to. <laughs> Let me go to the uh, Baba. Go to guy out of Los Angeles. Baba, Where's go that to statistic. Baba, go to guy you're on with. L.A. Baba, go to guy. Oh. Thank What's you, up, Jesse. Um, good morning. Um, let's see. For this your is, guest, I have a question. This is L.A. Oh, What's LA. up, buddy? Thank you. I have a question for you. Sure. If you are eating meat, fish and cow and chicken and whatever else, um, are you a vegetarian? No, but not by definition, no. No. So, by definition... If you believe abortion is okay and that homosexuality, homosexuality is okay and that it is God-blessed, are you a Christian? I am, but if you use that definition and you want to judge me with that stick, that's on you. So I'm you not can here just to be believe judged by whatever you, you want to, to believe and call yourself a Christian. Is that what I'm hearing? Because if you Say can't eat meat and be a vegetarian, how is it that you can do these basic disagree with the basic tenements of Christianity and still be a Christian. I don't understand that. Because I'm a sinner, Bobby, as are you, as is Jesse, that as is everyone else it. on the earth. We are all sinners right. asking for forgiveness. See, here's the thing with me. The Lord knows I'm a sinner. He knows my faults. Me and him have conversation all the time. I don't go out to do things to make him unhappy. Well, see, here's, but here's the difference between you, sinner, and, and and the Christians who used to be sinners, is that you still, no, call they still are sinners, good bro. evil. You still call good evil, and you call evil good. You call homosexuality no. good. You're never, you'll never be born again calling evil good, evil good. Well, I would I would say to you about that, Bobby, that that's your opinion. That's not Bobby. That's, that's, not up to, that's, that's not up to you to decide. That's up for the Lord to decide. That's not Bobby. That's the Bible go-to guy. Oh, the Bible go-to guy. <laughs> B-G-G. B-G-T-G. There you go. <laughs> the, thank you, Bible go-to. Listen, go L.A., you go ahead and keep eating meat and calling yourself a vegetarian, all right? Thanks, man. Have all a right. good day. Back in a moment. I need really quick answers, L.A. Oh, give out your website for the folks or whatever it is you want to give out. Um, you can catch me online with my stand-up comedy. It's L.A. Hardy. Dot com. And you can, since my man brought up eating food and uh, meat, he can come by to my fried chicken joint and get some fried chicken chops and waffles at the Funky Chicken, the Funky CCW on Facebook. <laughs> Next time you're in L.A., uh, let me let me know. I'll come in and watch your show. Please do, man. We got to we got to hook up, man. OK. Uh, how do you, you say you talk to God? How do you know you talk to God? I mean, shoot. Are you kidding me? I'm lucky to be here. I'm blessed. I was uh, hit by a car when I was 10 years old. I run over. Broadside. Broke my leg in half. A couple of concussions. Uh, at that point, the Lord talked to me, told me uh, I was here for a special purpose, and that's why I'm here. Um, so you said you are a, a Christian, a child of God, but you still sin. Can you be a child of God and still sin? Come on, man. Come on, Jesse. What kind of question is that? Of course the answer is yes. We but, all sin. But the Bible said the Bible said you cannot. That's no, what you're saved from no, sin. And, not. and so is the Bible wrong the, about there's the GTDB. I want you to read first John three nine. It says that you cannot sin if you're of God, for this reason Christ came. And if right. you say you're sin and of God, you're a liar and the truth not in him, in you. 
That may be all true. Jesus came for our sins, bro. So if you've been That's saved, if you've been saved from sin, how is it that you're still sinning if it's no longer part of your nature? I would ask you the same question. And it, it, it's not a part of your nature. I want to go to you. So you can't sin if you're truly a son of God. Let me go yeah. to Travis out of yeah. Chicago. Travis, go ahead. We have about a minute left, buddy. Come on, Travis. Okay. Hey, how's it going, Ella? Um, Good, Travis. How you doing, man? Yeah, I just want to say, man, Jesse deals with a lot of hypocrisy most of the time. Um, Do you give me an example, that, LA, uh, Travis? I, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. You just called uh, the NFL players thugs. Yes. Now, Those who are kneeling. Okay. They're, they're taking a, a, a knee for what they believe in. But you also refuse to call Dylan Roof a thug who murdered nine um, parishioners. And you tried to you tried to get so him so does excuse. that take away from the fact that the NFL players who are kneeling are thugs? That doesn't change the reality about them. Okay, but you won't you refuse to call Dylan Roof a thug. And you pick and choose. You cherry pick who who's thugs, who's Christian. You know what? You, you, you talk, you speak, hold on, hold on. You speak. I'm gonna say this. I'm out of time. Uh, L.A. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. 